Welcome. We have a 1976 Moog Taurus here that I just acquired. A previous owner decided to separate the top and bottom parts, as you can see. And electrically, it works pretty well. Got some contact issues in some of the pedals, but the oscillators sound good. This is bass. Tuba sound sounds pretty good too. Got some contact issues right there. Taurus sound sounds a little odd. And the variable sound sounds really good. So as I take you along through here, we're going to be cleaning it up a bunch and doing some basic bringing it back to its original state. So we're going to start with the keyboard section since everything kind of hinges on that. Uh, as I pointed out before, some of these don't work. Some of them, some of them do intermittently. They all have these these broomsticks that I've been put on here. We're going to get rid of those. We'll start off, we're going to take the cover off of here. This was put on later and uh, get in there and start cleaning things up. Okay, we got all the screws off. Let's open it up and take a look inside. All right. Let's see, you got quite a bit of dust and such through here. The uh, Looks like they made some kind of a mount for these plugs. I'm going to have to figure out exactly what the original location and configuration of those things was and uh, just generally generally needs a cleanup. The Moog service manual says to use ethyl alcohol otherwise known as ethanol for cleaning the contacts. I've got some tape head cleaner that's got ethanol in it. I'm going to give that a shot first. Let me turn the thing over so we can see the underside. Okay, the underside actually looks pretty good. Um, plenty of dust, but other than that, everything seems to be in order. Uh, I'm going to be removing the contact board in order to clean the contacts properly. This, uh, this unit was sitting in a closet for, as I understand, about 20 years, so a little bit of dust is to be expected. I also notice the uh, pads down here. Well, this one's still there, but it's very, very hard and probably going to fall off. This one's gone. Got to get new pads for that. But it generally looks okay. Let's, uh, let's disassemble it a little further and see what we can do about those contacts. I went ahead and removed the pedal extenders here and took off the aftermarket <laughs> wood covering that was fabricated there. I'll point out, the screws that I want to use again, I put them right back in the holes where they're going to be used in the future. If you do that, it'll save you a lot of headache later on. Now, looking at these contacts, yeah, there's a lot of dust on there and plenty of tarnish at the contact points. I'm going to be working with these a little bit to get them as clean as possible. If that doesn't pan out, we may have to either fabricate a new solution or purchase something else, but I think I think we'll be able to clean this up pretty well. I'm going to certainly give it a good shot. I've got the contact board out here and cleaned up a little bit. What I'm going to use to clean the contacts is this tape head cleaner because it contains ethyl alcohol and that is what is suggested within the Taurus uh, owners and service manual to use to clean these contacts. Now I've already begun. You can maybe see the difference between a clean one here and a dirty one there, it's much more tarnished. Um, cleaning the top part is pretty easy and probably not as crucial because it's not really where the contact occurs. However, it doesn't take a whole lot of this stuff just to demonstrate. You just kind of wipe it on there using a Q-tip, try to get it, get it uh, on the flexible part of the metal there. This is the contact, you can see it moving a little bit. and. Uh, this will this will all help. It certainly won't hurt. I've zoomed in here to show you a little better what I'm doing. It's got the Q-tip with the you know, tape head cleaner on it. The iso, uh, sorry, the ethyl alcohol. I'm just rubbing the contacts here. Now, this little thing that moves up and down 
that's what goes up when you hit a pedal this moves upward and touches the upper contact there when you let it go it goes back and touches the lower contact now it's got to touch both and it has to be clean on both for it really to work properly and we'll get to that a little later but the hardest part of this whole cleaning process is getting under this horizontal conductor here to, to clean the part where the contact actually takes place. So I'm going to show you a little trick. I have here a piece of scrap fabric. It's uh, just an ordinary piece of fabric, except it's not a knit. I tried using a knit t-shirt and it didn't work because uh, it stretched too much. This does not stretch. And what we're going to do is thread it under there and uh, coat it with some of this cleaner and then move it back and forth to clean the actual contact point. Now the hardest part is getting it under there. So I'm going to show you a little trick here. All right, so what we do is just take a piece of scotch tape, pull it off, maybe about that long, take a cloth, kind of tape it over it like that, and then fold it over, leaving a bit extending out like that. You can squeeze it nice and hard on both sides. The next thing we're going to do is trim that down. Okay, what I've done is I've trimmed the tape down so there's a little extension on the end of it there. And I'm just going to thread it underneath the horizontal contact there. And use some tweezers to pull it through. There we go. Now, pull it through a little further with my fingers. Now I'll take a little bit of that tape head cleaner. Dab it onto the cloth above point where we're going to be cleaning. There we go. Get kind of wet. And now just move it back and forth underneath that horizontal contact and it's going to clean it right up. You see the uh, fabric actually turning dark. That's the tarnish rubbing off the underside. I'm going to actually press the contact a little bit to get it to rub that point too gently. And uh, after we do this a little bit, just pull it back through and we're done. Now this is the top side. You're going to have to do the same thing to the bottom side. This is the note off function right here. Just same sort of deal. And then do the thing with the fabric. And uh, once it's all clean, it should do note on and off very nicely. I've already done five of these. This is number six. Got uh, seven more to go. And then after we're done, we'll plug it in and it should sound really, really good. All right, I got it all back together. As you can see, I've removed all the key caps and at one point I made a little mistake and broke free this one conductor here which I had to re-solder but I got it back on and let's test it out. Uh -huh. We got two that aren't quite doing it. It doesn't sound like there's nothing intermittent. This must be a problem elsewhere because these two Everything else is working just fantastic. Oh, there's one a little adjustment there. Uh, see when it meets, it does well. So, so the contacts are clean. You might have noticed there were a couple of keyboard uh, items here that weren't really working quite right. There, the contacts were doing okay, but they weren't making any sound. I did a little circuit tracing and found that the problem was located here in the connectors and uh, check the connections, check the solder points, they were all okay. Uh, I even opened up one of these plugs and checked out the, the internals to see how they were doing. All the solders were really good. It turns out there was one solder point that would, had come loose right there, so I had to redo that one. Got it done, and after cleaning everything in there, Sounding good. All contacts are operating as they should and sounding great. I'm going to show you one more thing about the contact adjustment here. The contact board is a pretty simple mechanism. You press the pedal and this little pad lifts up, presses against the contact point right there which causes the electrical connection. But how do you make sure that this is hitting this at the right time? As you can see, these two contacts here are not really at the same height. Uh, I don't want to bend that uh, if I 
if I can help it. You know, I don't want to mis misshape it. But uh, so how do I make sure that's happening? Well, right here, these little pads are actually mounted to a piece of metal, which is easily bent using a screwdriver, so you can get it further or closer to the pad as you need, I'm sorry, to the contact as needed. This is where you want to make the adjustment, not here. Uh, like I said before, you don't really want to bend these too much if you don't have to. With these, you can make much more precise and permanent adjustments. So that's, if you want, if you need to make those, that kind of a adjustment for height, do it right there and uh, just trial and error, get it right, and afterward it'll all work great. All right, it looks like we're done with the pedal board just about. All we need to do is put the pedal caps back on. I got some new brown ones coming in the mail. And the black ones, which I got right over there, we'll put those back on and get some rubber bumpers for the four corners to replace the old deteriorated rubber that has fallen off or is about to. Then this pedal board is going to be ready to go. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I hope it's been informative. My next video is going to have me getting into the actual synthesizer module, cleaning it up, replacing some potentiometers and some capacitors, and solving some tuning issues, and it's going to be really cool. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>